Thank you, Patrick. All right, so uh, as Patrick mentioned, I did a lightning talk at ShmooCon this year. Uh, I had to talk really, really fast to fit most of the things I wanted to do into it because it was a 10 minute block. And uh, this is the opportunity to share a little bit more of the interesting rabbit holes I went down playing around trying to uh, not get parking tickets in the city of Raleigh. Uh, so my disclaimer here, I did get to talk to people from both Passport Parking, which is a pretty big pa uh, parking app that all up and down the country, um, and the city of Raleigh. Uh, I'm not going to name names here. Uh, what I'm about to discuss is not an application flaw in Passport's app, nor any municipal system. That's just the, the window pane through which I discovered some of these fun things. Um, and about me, uh, so I'm a security engineer. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we use Passport Parking in for metered parking in downtown. Um, North Carolina allows specialized license plates uh, with special characters in them, which is pretty interesting. And mine has a dollar sign in it, so it's close to home. And uh, one time I was in Scotland on a family trip, and the first time I parked my car, I got a ticket, and it was because the number one looked like the I on the iPhone font, and I, it took me like two months to appeal it. Um, and there's a screenshot of the app from when we paid that they said didn't count. So here we go. Um, so th this is based on real events that took place pretty much last fall. Um, so the, the present day, I, I went to City Hall for a meeting. Uh, there's this really great one hour meter spots right across from City Hall. So I pulled right up. Um, the meeting started about 1.30 and I figured, well, if I'm there for more than an hour, uh, I have a passport parking app. It'll say, hey, your parking's expiring. Time to top it up. Um, it turns out that that's not always how it works. So. Uh, I bought an hour of parking and then it expired. Uh, but then when I went to renew it, uh, it said, sorry, uh, this was actually only one hour for this block. So they didn't have it so you could top it up. Like they set a policy in the application where it would only let you renew it for an hour. And then I think there's some kind of cool down period. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but once it cools down, you could then do another hour in that zone. Uh, so I was thinking, well, if this was the good old days of me forgetting to have quarters in my car, what would I have done? Um, so I would put more quarters in the meter. I'd like dip out for a minute and then feed the meter. Uh, move the car a little bit. Uh, you know, sometimes in some blocks you just have to move the car. It can't be in the same spot for too long. Or if you're, you know, some jurisdictions, and this is up in the air right now, but you know, they'll put chalk lines on tires to see how long they think you've been there. And people would just go rub them off. Um, so how do I get around this so I don't have to leave this meeting and I don't have to move my car to a different passport zone? Uh, well, when I signed up for my license plate, there was this form that they give you and it tells you, here's a bunch of characters that count as one space when you personalize your license plate. Things like ampersands, number signs, etc. Then there's characters that count as a half a space. And then there's characters that count as two spaces. This is really interesting because Effectively, it's saying these characters are the same thing as a space. Well, as I dig around the DMV website, you find this note at the bottom of a special characters guide that says, special characters will not be considered while determining whether the plate text is available. For example, plate A ampersand 3 at C is the same as A 3 C. So there's some conclusions we can draw from this. A special character is the same as a space, and a space is the same as nothing at all. Every license plate number with a special character in it can be expressed three different ways. So I put my car in without a license plate, or without the dollar sign, and it works. So how do we take this to the next level? Well, every non-personalized, non-specialty plate in North Carolina has a hyphen in the middle. So that means that each standard issue North Carolina plate could be put into a system as three different legally valid numbers. Not every parking system handles characters, spaces, anything. So you effectively need to know this uh, to be able to put it in wherever it's required. And then it gets more fun. North Carolina has a lot of specialty plates. So O's and zeros are the same here. So that's actually pretty easy. Um, but specialty plates have their own format. And uh, in talking with the parking department, those letters at the end are part of the plate number, right? Um, so we've got things like, you know, Blue Ridge Parkway, Carolina Hurricanes. My favorite is the watermelon one, um, but I haven't been able to sell my wife on getting it for a car. 
Um, but effectively, that would be the four-digit number followed by WM for watermelon uh, would be the legal plate. Um, but what comes with that is, you know, they don't want to give people tickets for missing those letters and things like that. So effectively, you know, what are our workarounds for the system? So if parking enforcement comes around, what they're looking for is they're looking for what's the plate that's detected by their either tool or by someone's eyes, and then it's, is it in a database of paid parking plates right now? Um, so if they don't see it in the database, they'll do a quick manual check. Otherwise, you get a ticket. So uh, they gave me numbers. So Raleigh writes less than 5% of people parking each year citation. That's actually a really low number. Um, so over 1.5 million transactions is 40 to 60,000 parking citations. So that's, that's actually pretty good. Um, and I'm going to get into that a little bit in some of my expanded content. Um, but the workaround for this is there's a robust appeals process. Um, so sometimes people pay for the zone next to the one they're parked in. So they park, they see the first passport sign, they see they put in a number okay, they did pay for parking, they're just paying the wrong area. So, and they also don't want to go ticketing like veterans um, who forget to put the little PH on their plate because they don't realize because that's not a thing in a lot of places. Um, so they accept most of the appeals, which is great. Uh, and kind of the mindset behind this is in a lot of cities, parking falls under law enforcement. They, they're treating it as there's rules. If you break the rules, you get punished for breaking the rules. Also, that gives us money to hire more people to enforce people breaking the rules, and it creates this like feedback loop of, uh, you know, just, I, I guess, economic misincentives to go after and like bust people for really minor stuff. And, and Raleigh very specifically does not take that view. They view it as a transportation network, and parking is one method for people to reach their destination within that. So I thought that was super interesting and overlaps with a lot of things we think about when we're, you know, working in technology. We're doing systems architecture and design. Um, and they keep the money separate. So I think it just goes into the city general fund. There's nobody who's going to be, like, getting a bonus or getting a new employee because people wrote more parking tickets, which is great. Um, so everything in the parking system, like I mentioned, they, they view it as an economic lever that can be adjusted here. Um, so in the situation that I talked about earlier, there's actually a garage behind City Hall where it's much cheaper to park for a longer period of time. Um, and that's kind of like a node within the system, right? So they, what they want is if you're going to go somewhere quickly, you can go right up on the street, you can pay a little bit of money, go in, get what you're doing done, and get out. But if you are going to be there for like two or three hours for like a city meeting or something, they want you to park somewhere that's designed with more capacity. Maybe it's a little bit longer of a walk, um, but it allows people who are running errands at local businesses and going to like, you know, run into a restaurant or something, they can park right out front real quick. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how that works. This garage, this is actually from the garage attached to City Hall. So, you know, I over here am trying to like work around this app and I could have just parked there and paid like $2 and been done with my life. Um, but the other thing that I thought was super interesting uh, with the city is that they're viewing this as like part of the customer journey, right? So um, it's a transportation network. Your goal as a person operating this network is to get where you're going. You want to do what you want to do, and then you want to leave. Um, so there's things that Passport has online, and I don't know how far they are with this. Uh, I know they've been doing experimentation and things like that. But effectively, they're tying into navigation apps like Google Maps or like Android uh, for cars and things like that. So it's like... How can you make it so your car takes you where you want to go, but it just takes you to the best parking spot that's available now for that thing? Um, or, you know, as self-driving and assisted driving become more common, could your car drop you off at the door and then just go to the nearest spot, you know, or price optimize? Like, there's a lot of possibilities coming up in the future with this. Um, and I think our, our city particularly takes a really forward-thinking view on this, and it's very interesting. Um, I love people who, like, nerd out about stuff, and we have people who are very passionate about parking systems and making municipal systems better here. Um, so here's some bonus content that's not specific to Raleigh or my original talk. Um, so California recently approved uh, digital license plates, and this is from an approved vendor called Reviver, and they show things like uh, in this on the right here, having a banner that says stolen on a car license plate. So if someone's car is reported stolen, it just says, hey, I'm stolen. Stuff like this is kind of crazy, and it's pretty new. Um, on Raleigh, or not Raleigh, on uh, Reddit, uh, somebody found one where someone had it, and they said they missed the Costco combo pizza. Um, but the onions are coming back soon. And then uh, also down this rabbit hole of like symbols and things on license plates, like what if there were emojis? Well, California has symbols on the kids' plates, uh, which 
the full name of the plate is the Have a Heart, Be a Star, Help Our Kids plate. Um, and I found a Q&A from a license plate, or from a, a newspaper up there, where effectively someone from the DMV says, there are no real guidelines on how to report symbols. One suggestion would be use parentheses. For example, I heart radio, I am hand Y. But there is no right way to do it. Then the California Highway Patrol added, well, we just don't pay attention to the symbol, which is pretty similar to what we do here in North Carolina. The symbol is the same as nothing. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. And then recently, we, uh, my family and I went on a road trip, and we got a new car some months ago and forgot to switch the Easy Pass over. So we got to experience pay-by-plate in every state going up the East Coast. And my favorite one was Maryland, um, because I, had to, I got a series of invoices in the mail, and I had to go through and pay them all by typing in a lot of information into a lot of different really slow websites. And the Maryland one was great because if you type in a license plate with the hyphen, it doesn't take it. But it doesn't tell you that that's why it doesn't take it. And the, the hyphens are standard in, I don't know, North Carolina, Rhode Island, handful of different states. So it's kind of funny and not very user friendly. Um, so you take out the hyphen and then it works, but then it wants you to select a plate type. And so this was kind of fun. Um, so you click into it and you get a box of five of them. And the really, you can see there's a really, really small like scrolly bar there. Um, North Carolina has something like 300 types. I don't think it's actually 300, but there's 300 in this list um, because I right click view source and I counted. So um, which one of them is normal car? Um, right, so we see if we go back, right, it starts at the alphabetical order. So we got like military, like vanity plates and specialty plates or some sororities. We come here. Um, I scrolled through this for way too long because I just wanted to pay the fine and move on with my life. Um, it's permanent vehicle, P-E-R. So my napkin math was if it takes you about three seconds to read five of them and there are 60 sets of five to check, it's going to take you about three minutes. Um, if you're really fast at that. I jumped around a lot because I kept thinking I could guess what they were going for, and instead then I had to come back and do this after to find it. Um, and then you have to know that permanent vehicle means regular car. So then I was like, okay, well, it can't just be like North Carolina. Like, let me see what state has the most vanity plates. So Wikipedia says Virginia, and they have 250 styles of plate to pick from. So I like, let me see how hard it is with Virginia. There's is right at the top. It just says standard. Um, so I thought that was pretty nice. And then sort of like bringing it all together. Um, so I think a lot of security and like technology like mindset carries over into like transportation networks. Um, so one of the things that, that used to happen was you would pay by the space. That would be like there's a meter. If, if the meter is current, someone can be in this space. No one will get a ticket. Now we've changed our entitlements to be by car or by license plate. So that's where we have all these apps. And you know, if you go to Carolina Beach, for example, they have these like big lots and what people used to do, and I used to really like this, uh, was they would, you know, as someone was pulling out of the lot, they'd hand the paid for all day parking receipt to someone pulling into the lot and you'd kind of keep pay it forward and keep it going. Municipalities hate this. They get no data from that. They don't know what turnover looks like. They don't get very much revenue. So now even those have switched to these kiosks that, you know, tie into these apps and things. Um, effectively changing the entitlement from to the lot or the space to by the car. Um, but that, I mean, that carries over to a lot of things with like user management, identity, access management, things like that. How do you handle entitlements? Um, then there's automated detection and handling false negatives, right? As security people were very cognizant of this. Uh, license plate detection technology takes its best stab. My understanding from talking to the city is that it's like 90% good at it, um, but then you have to handle those edge cases with things like the appeals process. Um, then there's you know, rules-based enforcement across different vendors and tools. I think Passport themselves like, has an offering where they will integrate with like over 100 different vendors, right? I think in the city of Raleigh, off the top of my head right now, I can think of like three different parking deck management companies. And you know, there are various degrees of private, public, whatever. But if the city wants to count them as part of their network, right, they have to integrate with all these different vendors and tools. And then um, another thing that, that they told me in the city is in some blocks where those vendors change, you can pay on one block and then go over another and like have to type in your license plate like a different way because the tech is just different in the two kiosks. Maybe it's even different versions of the kiosk. So there's just like some really interesting stuff with that. Um, and then input validation and standardization, kind of like what I was saying, and I found this Maryland thing, like 
it's, you really do have to know all the forms of your license plate when you live in North Carolina, and that's kind of funny. And end user awareness and training, you know, signs everywhere, it's parking. Um, and then it's all regulatory because this municipality is dealing with like people's money. So it interfaces with a lot of the challenges we, we see in the industry. Um, so that's, that's what I've got. Uh, I can open it for questions if anyone has any. Um, as always, special thanks to both the city of Raleigh and Passport Parking for talking to me. So it depends on the system, and that's where it gets really weird, right? So like in the parking app, I have it, my license plate saved as both with a dollar sign and without a dollar sign. And legally, they're both the same thing, but it's going to depend who's looking at it in the moment in that thing. Because I just went through a bunch of pay-by plates up and down the East Coast. I can tell you that like some of them detect a dollar sign as an S, right? Well, they find my address anyway, and they send me the ticket. So like it worked. But... Um, you know, like I, Raleigh Airport, I know they, they're really bad at reading special characters. So there's a lot of stuff where they just try to like guess at it as best they can. Some systems are built to accommodate, some aren't. It, it's just kind of a mess, but it's fun. Are there any symbols they don't allow? I have the list that they do allow, which is this one. So they've got, they've got a pretty good amount. Like you can put at signs, you can put... Um, like commas, apostrophes, hashtags. I don't believe they do. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just scrolling for minutes. I was like, I just want to pay this. It was like a $5 Baltimore Bridge thing, or Baltimore Tunnel thing, and I'm like, scroll, 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 scroll. Um, I looked at, so there are a few more states that were in the list of top vanity plates, so I thought maybe that they have a lot of personalization options. I think second after Virginia was New Hampshire, but they really only have like 10 different kinds of plates, so it, it was like motor vehicle or something. So it wasn't as interesting. Oh, I know. It, it was funny, because, and if you, like, right-click view source or inspect element on the Virginia one, they have so many different kinds of plates. There's, like, almost double the amount of actual entries that, like, the North Carolina one has in the list, but theirs is right at the top for regular. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, and... Uh, Enjoy your lunch break.